Good morning. Uh, Javier Becerra, uh, the Attorney General for, for our great state of California. I'm pleased to be joined by the District Attorney for the County of Los Angeles, Jackie Lacey, who has been a tireless advocate for prosecution of those who are conducting illegal activities and uh, a great partner for law enforcement. Joined also by uh, Chief Kevin Gardner of the Division of Law Enforcement of the Department of Justice, and we're also joined next to me by uh, Special Agent in Charge, Tony Liddell, to my left. Uh, and I want to introduce to you uh, the men and women of the Bureau of Firearms within the Division of Law Enforcement of the Department of Justice as well, who actually do the day-to-day -day work along with Tony. Uh, Sam Richardson, the Special Agent Supervisor. Special Agent Leo Rodriguez, who was the case agent in this case, Special Agent Aristide Powell, Special Agent Chris Concilia, Special Agent Victoria Torres, and Special Agent Alvaro Ariola. Uh, thanks to those men and women, our special agents at the Department of Justice's Division of Law Enforcement, uh, we have some good news to report to the people of the County of Los Angeles and just generally for the people of California. These are the men and women who seize weapons from people who should not possess them. And it's important to note that only in California do we have a law that permits us to have our Bureau of Firearms Special Agents who can go out and actually seize the weapons of individuals who committed crimes and are a danger to society to the point where we have a law that does not permit them to own weapons and we have the right to then go in and seize them. The program, which we know as APPS, that is called the Armed Prohibited Persons System, is a program that was initiated back in 1999. But it's really thanks to the men and women who wear the uniform, the special agents who have to do this work as a team, that we get the job done. The case that we're going to report to you on originates in Temple City in the county of Los Angeles. But let me tell you a little bit about the work that we do before we tell you about the specifics of this particular case. Uh, it's important, as I said, to note that what was done in Temple City is not done anywhere outside of the state of California, where we can go in and capture weapons from people who have committed crimes who have uh, existing restraining orders against them and who are therefore listed on the APPS program and therefore our agents are able to go out and procure the weapons that they possess. Since 1999, the APPS program has made great strides in helping us remove weapons from the hands of those who have committed crimes. What APPS does is it cross-references firearms that are owned by individuals and of course the name is, uh, names of those owners of those weapons, against a criminal history record and against a record of restraining orders. We are then able to secure the name of that individual and then begin the process to try to apprehend the weapons that may be in possession of that individual unlawfully. We, uh, we start with the weapons that we know that the individual owns or possesses because they have been registered. Oftentimes what we find is it goes well beyond that. So let me give you the specifics of today's case. And I say this knowing that uh, it comes on the heels of a case we had just two weeks ago that we reported on, an individual by the name of Mark Mormon, who we went in to get two weapons that he had registered, and we came out of his residence with 25 weapons, 2,000 rounds of ammunition, 44 of those weapons, um, excuse me, 44 magazines, 19 of which I believe were high-capacity magazines, and that was done just two weeks ago, and certainly on the heels of the devastating mass shooting that occurred in Florida just a week ago or so, uh, we make this announcement. And I should note that in just a few moments, I believe, Sheriff McDonald will be, be making an announcement of the seizure of weapons and the capture of an individual who was planning to do a shooting at a school in the uh, L.A. County area as well. So wrapped around all of that, 
Today, I announced that our agents uh, from the Division of Law Enforcement and the Bureau of Firearms were able to conduct an operation to search for four firearms owned by a Mr. Stephen David Ponder. Mr. Ponder had been added to the APPS database due to two prior felony convictions, one for counterfeiting money, the other for possessing a machine gun. All of that means that Mr. Ponder was now banned from owning firearms immediately after he had been convicted. Our agents searched his home and recovered not just four weapons, but 28 firearms and 66,000 rounds of ammunition. This is the, the cash that you see that was seized from his home. 13 of the guns were complete AR-15 style weapons, like the ones used in far too many of the mass shootings that have been reported over the weeks and months here in the United States. 11 of the firearms we seized are what we consider ghost guns because they have no serial number, which means they're virtually impossible to trace. Ghost guns are usually manufactured by an individual. Usually they do so to be able to avoid background checks and registration requirements. Two of the weapons that we seized were fully automatic machine guns. They are capable of firing multiple rounds per trigger pull, up to a rate of some 300 rounds per minute, if not higher. Since 2013, the Division of Law Enforcement's Bureau of Firearms at the Department of Justice has seized more than 18,000 firearms from individuals who are legally barred from owning guns. Today, we add Mr. Ponder's weapons to that list. And I want to repeat, only in California do we have a law that permits us to seize these weapons from people who have committed crimes. I now wish to turn it over to our district attorney here in the county of Los Angeles, Jackie Lacey. Thank you, Attorney General. Good morning, and I want to thank the Attorney General for uh, his diligence on this very important issue, as well as the California Department of Justice, Cal DOJ as we call them, the Division of Law Enforcement, for their detailed and diligent work in this case against the Ponders. Gun violence affects too many people across our great nation. We must use the tools that we have, like the enforcement effort we are here to acknowledge today to address those urgent public safety concerns. As a student in the 70s, I walked to high school in fear of being shot by gang members. That fear, however, ended when I walked onto my campus because that's because I knew that my teachers could and would help keep me safe so I could focus on my studies. Today's students face a far different world. The places we went to feel safe are no longer havens for our children. Too many young people have died inside schools, and too many people have died inside churches. Too many innocent people have been shot and killed inside music clubs and movie theaters and at concerts. Quite frankly, enough is enough. We as prosecutors can help prevent gun violence by strictly enforcing state laws that prohibited convicted felons from owning or possessing firearms. As District Attorney of LA County, I am committed to prosecuting individuals who violate court orders by failing to give up their guns as they pose a serious threat to our community. We are fortunate here in California to have an active law enforcement effort to remove guns from our neighborhoods led by our own Attorney General Becerra. In this case, my office has filed seven felony counts against Stephen Ponder, who is 57, of Temple City. Those counts include possession of a firearm by a felon, uh, possession of an assault weapon, and a machine gun, as well as a shotgun. His 27-year-old daughter, Riley, was charged with three felony counts also, including possession of an assault weapon and a destructive device. Stephen Ponder faces as many as eight years in state prison if convicted of all charges. 
his daughter could serve as many as five years. I'm also working with state lawmakers on a way to expand our efforts to curb gun violence in California. I want to make sure that individuals with violent juvenile records aren't allowed to illegally possess firearms simply because their court records have been sealed. The Juvenile Gun Safety Act, authored by State Senator Henry Stern, closes that gap, just as ACE SB 140 did to disarm many of those people who have posed a threat to themselves and others in our community. I'm also asking lawmakers to give prosecutors access to sealed juvenile records to enforce existing laws against juvenile offenders. With this vital information, we can expand law enforcement efforts by also keeping guns out of the hands of individuals found to have committed violent crimes as minors. I'm also urging national legislatures not to pass the Concealed Carry Reciprocity Act. This proposed law would require each state to honor a concealed carry permit issued by another state regardless of local restrictions. All of these efforts take guns out of the hands of criminals and will help to save lives. Thank you very much. Thank you, District Attorney Lacey. Let me now ask the Chief of the Division of Law Enforcement at the Department of Justice, Chief Kevin Gardner, to say some words. Chief. Thank you, Attorney General. Uh, before I move on to this particular case, I just wanted to, talk, to mention a little bit about who the Division of Law Enforcement is and what they do. The Division of Law Enforcement, as the name uh, indicates, is the uh, law enforcement investigative arm of the California Department of Justice. Uh, it is made up of sworn uh, special agents, forensic scientists, crime analysts, and a host of professional staff that do a variety of support and administrative services. Uh, we investigate such crimes as human trafficking, drug trafficking, gang, gang violence, um, underground economies, uh, and a whole myriad of other things in, in, as a solo agency and also in partnership with other law enforcement agencies in the state of California. This particular case is an example of the hard work that's done by the special agents of the California Department of Justice, Division of Law Enforcement, on a daily basis. This, as the Attorney General said, is not a random case. This is a targeted case that targets a population of prohibited owners that include convicted felons, spousal abusers, and those adjudicated to be a danger to themselves and others. The, as you can uh, imagine, there's a high potential for violence in these sort of cases, but through the uh, preparation and professionalism of the Special Agents of the California Department of Justice, I'm happy to say that we have very little, or very few instances of, of resistance and violence in the cases that we, that we conduct. Uh, we are committed to doing our part to assist in fighting back uh, the mass shootings and the type of violence that we see that's too prevalent in the news today uh, by continuing to seize these sort of weapons. And uh, we will be a willing partner with any of our law enforcement partners to be there to, to, to keep the uh, people of the Cal state of California safe. Thank you. So I just want to make sure we repeat. Uh, we went in for four weapons when we went into Mr. Ponder's home to search for the weapons that we knew he had registered. When you come out with something like this, 28 weapons, when you know that at least 11 of them are ghost guns that can't be traced because they have no serial number, where you see 13 of them uh, AR-15 style assault weapons, uh, you know that you got work to do. And I think it's important to recognize that when someone is willing to conceal this number of weapons, it is a tough task to go in and get the job done right. And, and I think it's important to recognize that every day we've got special agents who are doing this uh, to make sure that people are safe throughout the state of California. And I think we owe them a great deal of gratitude for what they do, and they do it safely. We also have to remember that we're the only state that does this. It's a shame because we've seen tragedies occur way too often and mass killings. We'll take any questions. Thank you all very much.